This is one of the introductory videos of uh, storyboarding. What is it? Why you want to use it? And how you can make a good storyboarding project for your video lecture. Uh, in fact, you could use this for your regular lecture as well. So uh, let's move on to the next slide. So what is a storyboard or storyboarding? Essentially, it is a game plan. How you are going to introduce and how you're going to deliver your lecture. Um, it is widely used uh, throughout the history and throughout the industry. Uh, education uh, is not uh, ex an exception. So I would like to invite you to watch a short YouTube video of um, the master animation director Miyazaki. Uh, it's a short kind of a fun video of how he does uh, storyboarding. In fact, um, he's not the only animation director uh, who uses storyboard. In fact, every animation director, movie director, or any kind of uh, project do use uh, uh, storyboard or storyboarding. Um, in the subsequent uh, slides, I'm going to show you some examples, but let's watch the video first. Uh, if you are uh, watching this video on YouTube, I'm going to put that uh, link below in the uh, video description section. And if you are watching this video on uh, PowerPoint, uh, you can go ahead and click on the link or click on the uh, the image, then that'll take you to the YouTube video. So go ahead and watch the video and come back. So why should you use a storyboard for your lecture and lecture video? It helps you to focus. It helps you to see what you are thinking in terms of what is important, what are the details, uh, and how you understand the concept or the subject. It's all in your mind through uh, storyboarding process. You can put it out on either on paper or PowerPoint slides or any medium that you feel comfortable. Uh, you can use tablet PC, you can draw things, um, you name it. It's your choice, but the key thing is that you're putting it out so that you can see it, you can touch it, you can move it around. You can draw circles and arrows and, and so on. It's like a um, solo brain uh, brainstorming. So that's the key reason why you want to use a uh, storyboard before you actually start recording your lecture. Um, it is something that you can just put it out uh, without worrying too much about what the final outcome will be, but just putting things out. And then you can edit it, move it, delete it. Uh, so it you go through the iterative, iter, uh, uh, iterative process. Uh, you just put out the whole uh, storyboard for your lecture and then you kind of reevaluate, arrange it, rearrange it, and you go through the process uh, several times. And then you have a good plan, and then uh, that'll help you to organize not uh, only the storyboard itself, but also your lecture. So your uh, recording will be uh, smoother and uh, enriched. So in terms of details, how, how detailed do you want to be? Again, it is an iterative process and also your choice. Um, I meant to say uh, iterative, not eternal. <laughs> anyway, um, it, is, it is a process. And so the first thing you may just put down some images or some keywords and then uh, the second time around, you may add more contents. As, uh, as detailed as the actual script, like every uh, single word that you want to say, you can write uh, down in the storyboard if you want to. 
So that is your choice, uh, how detailed or uh, kind of a summative you want to be, that's your choice. But the process, it is something that you uh, should do. Uh, that will save you time and that will make your lecture much more engaging. So speaking of engaging, um, giving a lecture or recording a lecture, it's, it's like a, a storytelling. Um, it's a, there's a beginning, there is a uh, engaging or excitement or kind of a bring things up and then there is key point. There's a could be turning point or it could be just highlight and then conclusion. So you could, you'll be using the concept of a storytelling or the skills of a storytelling. Um, another example could be uh, how to deliver a good joke. Uh, so think about how, <laughs> when you hear a good joke, what is it? And when you laugh about it, when you, when you, uh, when you cry about something, what does it make you feel that way? And you're going to use the same skill or same strategies uh, to design your lecture. And then uh, that will be much more effective. But that's for a little bit later. I don't expect you to think about all this uh, intricacy at this point. So uh, let's move on to the next slide, and which will uh, that uh, we'll be discussing about how you actually going to uh, do storyboarding. So just before we get into the process of a storyboard uh, production. Uh, let's talk about the challenges, common challenges. So for example, how do I organize uh, the lecture? Uh, how long would it be? Um, or how detailed or not the content should be? Um, what format to use? Do I use uh, uh, a PowerPoint? What do I use just a regular uh, document camera or, or, or what? So there are so many things that may not be uh, concrete yet. And that creates some kind of a hesitation. Um, and it may require a little bit of thinking process, but the key thing is you move on, uh, move ahead. And then a lot of questions will be answered as you uh, go through the uh, storyboard uh, process. And another thing, uh, the challenge about a video lecture recording is self-doubt. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, when I first started teaching, it was quite uh, uh, nerve-wracking, uh, standing in front of a class. Um, self-doubt such as, do I know enough? What if the students ask? questions that I don't have an answer for. So there's a lot of uh, uh, self-doubts or the nervousness or, you know, such as like, a, do I look okay? Um, and that sort of kind of things. Again, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, word of advice is that it's okay. And that's why we are doing storyboard uh, and storyboarding process. So a lot of questions will be answered through the process. So um, feel confident because you know what you'll be talking about. And if you, do, if you find something that you do not know, well, it's a great opportunity to, to do uh, further research. Okay, so let's do it. I'm gonna show you a five step process of storyboarding. First, gather and analyze the contents. So you may have textbooks or reading materials, uh, websites, uh, videos uh, of, of, of the subject. So you gather things up and then you would organize in a way that will make more sense to the audience, in this case, your students. And um, essentially, you are going to provide uh, the quote-unquote tilted uh, 
presentation. So you provide what is it, you know, basically five W's and one H. What is it? Uh, uh, why do I care? Um, and then when did it happen? And how did it happen? And where did it happen? So, you know, that sort of kind of thing. So that's basically a key concept about tilted uh, instruction. Uh, the tilted instruction uh, means uh, transparency in uh, learning and teaching. So tilt, T-I-L-T. So basically you provide the basic framework of the lesson to your students. And uh, storyboarding or your, your recorded lecture should follow that basic format. And um, so it'll be much easier to deliver and it'll be uh, much more engaging and easy for the audience to un and follow and understand your lecture. Uh, a few things that you can do in terms of organizing would be um, the mapping out the sequence of the introduction. And or you could use uh, PowerPoint slides, or for that matter, you could uh, pop out some questions um, so, for example, what could be, what would be an interesting or engaging way to present your lecture? So I put out a question, and then, um, so obviously, you know, this is not synchronized video, so you may not get the answer, but you could ask uh, your audience, your students, to put their answers in the discussion board or in the chat line and that sort of kind of things. So in, think about engaging, uh, inviting your students to uh, interact with you, even though that may mean uh, asynchronous. So um, the alternative way to organize things is uh, use a uh, post-its, uh, stickers, and you can use a, a, a window where you can put the things around, uh, the, the post-its, or uh, you could use a mind map. So you can draw things about the key concepts and keywords, and then whatever that comes out of that concept to the next level or next step. So that will, again, help you to organize your uh, lecture. Then the third step will be you know, just put out the draft, um, quote unquote, uh, awful draft. Uh, so sometimes I'm self-critical, so I hesitate. I think too much or uh, I was not sure about how the quality of the my lecture would be. So I tell myself, don't worry about it, just go ahead and put it out and just put out this awful first draft. Well, that's what the draft is for. And then um, I go through the uh, iteration. So revising, editing, uh, making it tight, making it uh, engaging. So uh, go through the process of uh, several drafts. Um, consider using um, this uh, draft as uh, multi-purpose items. So for example, not just for planning for your lecture, uh, video lecture, but you could use it as a, a reference. And in fact, you could use uh, it as a, a lecture note in your in-class lecture. The fourth step would be a reviewing. And this is a kind of a challenging because, uh, because you went through the, uh, the process, a lot of it is in your mind. So something that um, should be explained may not need to be uh, perceived as a not needed to be explained. So I would just make sure that it set your mind as like a first person, uh, the person who sees this content for the first time. For that matter, you can maybe ask your colleague to take a look at it and see if that makes sense. Um, 
to them. And if not, then you go back to the uh, drawing board and and which part and where to tweak it. And of course, you're going to do the fact checks, um, just making sure that re your reference is correct and that sort of kind of things. And then you go ahead and uh, record it. So sometimes um, I I finished the recording just with one one uh, one shot. Sometimes I retake it two, three, even five times. Uh, that's a little bit too much. Uh, one thing that I've learned uh, for the last few years is that I do not have to be perfect. I do not have to have a uh, engaging. Um, and I do not have to be uh, correct all the time because sometimes I do make a mistake in uh, in the in classroom lecture. So I make myself corrected, and I also invite students to point certain things out and raise questions and that sort of kind of things. So again, I am not producing PBS documentary. I'm just creating a lecture so the students can benefit. So. If it's good, it's good. It's good enough. Uh, it's, I'm not going to uh, uh, seek for the perfect uh, video. So uh, give yourself a little bit of a break and just move on. So the basic rule of thumb is that uh, maybe about two, two takes, maybe three takes, but not, not more than that. Um, just feel free to say, oh, that's an error. Uh, this is the correct uh, content. Then you basically self-correct, and then you just move on to the next lecture. All right. In this last slide, I want to talk about something that I uh, raised earlier, which is about um, how do I engage my students with my video contents. I do not create a video, I do not want to create a video that's like a, something called death by PowerPoint, you know, going through the, all the details, you know, line after line after line, and then, you know, I, you know, some students, my students will fall asleep after about 20 seconds. Um, I do not want that. I want my lecture, uh, recorded lecture, to be engaging, uh, interesting, uh, intriguing, uh, exciting, so that students will think about the key concepts uh, even after the video is over, even after students go out of the classroom and go to the next class. I want them to think about. So how do I do that? Well, it is something about um, it related to our storytelling. Uh, I mentioned about uh, delivering a good joke. Uh, I do not need to include every single details, details about the concept or the lecture in the lecture. Um, but this, the purpose of the video, this video that I'm creating uh, for my students, it's more like an introduction or kind of a highlighting some key things. I, I expect that stu students get the, the all the details and substance through reading and their studying and so on. So this is more like a, uh, highlighting these are the important things. These are the reason why uh, I want you to consider this and that sort of kind of, kind of a, uh, engagement. So how do I do that? How do I create something um, uh, that is uh, concise, precise, and thought-provoking? So I call it storytelling. So there's some key uh, skills and uh, tools that we can uh, use from storytelling. So. Um, I want you to, again, watch uh, a video uh, by Scott Simon, uh, uh, a commentator from uh, NPR, and uh, he's a seasoned reporter. 
which is again is a profession of storytelling. You know what happened, why it happened, why is it important, um, how did it happen, and that sort of kind of things. But again, if you just tell the just facts line after line, the audience uh, will not remember. It's not going to make an impact. It's just you know white noise uh, in the background. But if you deliver in certain way, uh, it will um, attract their attention, and therefore they uh, the audience will think about process it, uh, talk about it, and all kinds of uh, uh, what I call learning process. And uh, the key function of uh, recorded video lecture is just that. So um, I want you to go ahead and watch that video after this uh, end of this, this video. Uh, if Again, if you are using uh, PowerPoint, uh, just go ahead and click on the link or click on that image of a Scott Simon, or if you're watching on YouTube, just go ahead and click the uh, the link that I provided in the uh, video uh, the description description section. And as uh, as uh, Scott Simon says, have fun. So that will bring more energy and uh, excitement to your contents. Okay, thank you.